Happy Tuesday! It's reading, it's the island at the end of everything. Session 12, can you believe it? And we are focusing still on giving and explaining the meaning, oh, the mean of words in context. Da, da, da. Well done to those of you who spotted the typo, which I did, obviously, on purpose. Hmm. Uh, sorry about that. The meaning of words in context. So, again, reading around the word, thinking about synonyms. You've got it. Do you know what we're doing by now? Okay, so same on the whole class read from yesterday. So sitting and clutching your bundle of things from home, what you saved before it was burned. Um, clothes, a doll, some books, letters from your mother. Somehow it is always dusk when you approach. The island changes from a dark dot to a green heaven on the horizon. High on a cross-topped cliff that slopes towards the sea is a field of white flowers looping strangely. It's not until you are closer that you see that it forms the shape of an eagle, and it's not until you're very close that you see it is made of stones. This is when your heart hardens in your chest like petals turning to pebbles. Nane says the white eagle's meaning is known across all the surrounding islands, even all the places outside our sea. It means stay away, do not come here unless you have no choice. Now, I've been thinking about this and I think that it says, doesn't it? This is when your heart hardens in your chest like petals turning to pebbles and then goes on to say that Nanny says, right, we know that this person talking um, here knows about the white eagle's meaning because of their nanny. So I think now I'm inferring, not that this is the skill we're doing today, but just a bit of book talk. I think that the people on the boat don't know where they're going until they see this white eagle. And that's why suddenly this hard feeling in their chest comes. It's like shock, this realisation that, oh my gosh, I'm going to this island where um, I've got no choice. And then they know, oh my gosh, I'm being taken to the island at the end of everything. That's why I think anyway. Um, so back to the book talk, same as yesterday, we've talked about sitting and clutching your bundle of things, telling us there were a group of very disorganised things, um, they were saved before the house was burned, um, so they were rescued, so this person had to valiantly go into their house to fight the flames and um, to grab all the bits that they could get, and what they did decide to grab, or what they could grab, were clothes, because they have recognised that they're old enough that they're going to need to get dressed themselves. Um, a doll, but they're still young enough to um, have like a doll that they really care about and want to play with. It might actually be like um, some of us have, don't we, like blankets or teddy bears or things that we don't really use now for comfort maybe, but that we, um, we just keep because they were comforting to us. Um, in my son's room, I have a little teddy bear on the shelf that was mine when I was um, when I was his age. So I have it in there too because I couldn't bear to throw it away, even though I don't need it anymore. Um, so this per this person here, the writer, the people who save things anyway, they've got connections like sentimental connections to things, and they they don't want to give away this doll. Some books. So this person is clever enough to know they're going to need to um, read. Um, furthering their education and letters from their mother, multiple letters we discovered yesterday and their mother is sending them to this person because they don't live together is what we're inferring. It's that feeling of darkness when they get in there, you can see the darkness coming so that's how they feel, oh my goodness something bad's going to happen to me and they've travelled for so long that the island initially looks like it was a little dot really far away um, and when they get closer they see that it's this massive um, heaven so wherever they look from left to write it's all they can see isn't it because it's so big so they really realize that actually what looked like something tiny is actually this massive island because when they go left to right there's nothing else that can be seen um, then we know that they've got this cliff here that's covered in a graveyard each of the graves marked with a cross um, and there's this what looks like white flowers but actually you look at it and you see it's just rocks loads of white stones that have been organized to look like an eagle and that eagle means this island is an island where people are brought, um, it's forced, um, don't come here. So if people were passing it on a boat, they wouldn't stop there if they needed to. They'd know, goodness me, I must stay away from that island. So a bit of book talk there. Um, now a bit of independent practice based off of the book talk. This is the bronze bit. If you are silver, it's worth looking at the bronze bit as well because it will probably help you with your task. Bronzes, pay close attention. Your questions. In the sentence, the island changes from a dark dot to the green, a green heaven on the horizon. 
What does the word changes mean? Does it mean transforms? Does it mean moves? Or does it mean grows? Now, which word is closest in meaning to around in the following phrase, known all across the surrounding area? So you're looking for a preposition because around is a preposition. Now think of which word is most like around. Try and replace it in the phrase and then tick all of the statements that are true. Is it true that people do not go to the island by choice? Is it true that people choose to visit the island? Is it true that going to the island is the only option for some people? So you need to choose which ones of those are true and then find and copy the word that is closest in meaning to odd. Right, pause the video now, bronzes, and then get ready to press play when you've done those questions there. So those four questions there, do those four and then press play. Okay, time for the answers. Here are your answers. So you should have ticked the word transforms. Now, yes, you might have thought it was grows. The word it grows, okay, but it changes from a dark dot to green heaven on the horizon because it doesn't actually grow you just get closer to it and that's why we have the word transforms and um, we have a cross as our similar word to around and then there are two things that are true it is true that people do not go there by choice they don't have a choice at all okay so it's true um, and then going to the island is the only option for some people remember we talked about the fact that these people have no choice okay so it's we said that possibly what might happen is the men turn up at their door and say right get on the boat and if you don't then this is going to happen it's an or else kind of situation so they've got no choice it's the only option for them other than to maybe die and then the word that means the same as odd is strange looping strangely as so of strange and strangely okay so there's a few more bronzes. Now what you need to do is do a true um, ticket if it's true for the first question. Um, only one of them is true. And then you've got to circle the words that completes the sentence best by thinking about the phrase. So let's look at that. So what does the phrase leave straight away mean? Does leave straight, straight away mean immediately leave? Hesitate to leave or delay leaving? And then we've got this next bit. The stars were setting out their little lights. So does this mean that the stars were twinkling? Does it mean they were appearing? Does it mean they were shining? Or does it mean they were hidden? So you need to circle just one. So the stars were setting out their little lights. And then now thinking about the lights. Were the lights bright? Were the lights large? Were the lights dim? Or were the lights small? And then we'll have a little look at the answers in a moment. So pause the video now so that you can have a good go. Press play when you're ready for the answers. Right, okay, answer time. Here we go. Immediately leave is the same as leaving straight away. And then we know that they were setting out. So they're just beginning. They're just setting out. They're just beginning. They're just appearing. So that's why we've got appearing. And then their little lights are the same as saying they're small lights. So well done, bronzes. Um, purple pen or purple font or purple circle or purple tick to show if you've made any changes. And if you've done a really good job, then you can carry on and have another go at silver. So stick with me then to look at silver. OK, silver challenge time. Silvers are three questions. Explain two things that the words they will burn the boat when they get back as they did your house tell you. Then what do you learn about the men from those words? The same words, they will burn the boat when they get back as they did your house. And then find two examples of people on the island that show kindness towards the stranger. So what do people do to show kindness? So this is independent practice, Silver. So you need to read back through that bit of text, the bit that comes with today's lesson. Um, you can look back at the beginning and listen to my guided practice, my kind of book talk, to answer these questions. So you need to pause the video now and have a good go. What you must do, though, Silvers, is you must press play again and then listen to the answers so pause it now have a go press play when you're ready to move on okay time to press play and move on then so explain two things that the words they will burn the boat when they get back as they did your house tell you now here we go the men will burn the boat so that's the first thing they will burn the boat that's really important i get that from they will burn the boat Okay, they'll do it when they get back. They're going to destroy the boat. They're going to set fire to the boat. Any of those answers would be brilliant. And then as they did your house is the second bit. Um, the writer's house has been burned. Um, what we also know, and what I should have maybe put, 
is that the men who burnt the house are the same men who are now rowing the boat. So can you imagine sitting on a boat with men who've just come and set fire to your house and then those men are willing to watch you die um, if you wobble and then they drop you off and then they just leave straight away. You'd be very infuriated um, by these men. Right, question two. What do you learn about the men from those words? I just touched on this. They're the same people who burned the writer's house. Dun, dun, dun. So that's question two. Um, question three. Find two examples of people on the island showing kindness towards the narrator. Or the narrator. I can't speak. Or writer. Um, uh, so let's look. Someone will be there to greet you. So somebody knows that they're coming, they'll be there to greet you, to welcome you, so that you don't feel so alone. And it also says they understand. And therefore, they're showing kindness, aren't they? They're doing something to make the writer feel calmer, less anxious, better. So purple pen, all of those answers, Silvers. And if you did a really cracking job, then you can stick with us for gold. Okay, gold time. Gold, you've got um, three questions, kind of got 2A and 2B, and we're going to do the first one together as um, some guided practice. So let's have a look. Um, one, it is not until you are closer that you see that it forms the shape of an eagle, and it is not until you are closer still that you see that it is made of stones. Take a moment, Gold, and think about which words in that um, little extract, that which words are the most important because we're thinking about struggling to leave. So think about now. Okay, so we know that eagles are important there because birds should be free. But we know that it can't be free because it's made of stones. So what we're doing is we're going to tie those two points together to talk about how they're struggling to leave. And um, there we go. So the eagle is used as a metaphor for freedom. They are powerful and strong. They can fend for themselves. They are independent. They are free to fly when they choose to do so. But in the text, the eagle is made of stones and stones are heavy. And those stones are, act as a metaphor for being stuck or trapped. So what we've got is a bird that is weighed down so heavily that it can never, ever leave. Something that should be super free to do whatever it wants is trapped. So the eagle actually represents the people on the island. Those people are desperate to leave. Those people want to be independent. They want to be free. But they are trapped on this island forever. And the stones represent whatever it is that they've got, whatever that condition is that stops the men from wanting to get close, that means that they've got to be taken away from their families. That's the bit that ties them to the island. So if you didn't get that, don't, I don't, don't worry because it's quite deep. But... If you did, fantastic inference there as well, because this one's kind of a bit of inference as well, that metaphor. Um, what I'd like you to do is purple pen any bits that you feel you didn't quite get. So if you said, you know, they're struggling to leave because it, the eagle's been made to feel very heavy, talk about what that heaviness is supposed to represent, okay? Add in a bit about the eagle being free. So that's the guided practice. You can see how much of an answer I've put there, and that should hopefully be able to help you with the next two. Please pause the video now. You must press play when you are ready to find out the answers. Please, I'm doing this for a reason, so you are learning from it. Um, don't just ignore it. So press play now and then press, sorry, press pause now and press play when you're ready to move on. Right then, Gold, you must have had a good crack at that because you pressed play. So let's find out the answers. In the, oh, independent practice time, that's what you just did. Here we go. So find two different groups of words that show that the men do not want to interact with anyone. So I'm talking about this more recent bit. We could obviously be saying they have cloth stuff with herbs. They don't want to breathe your breath. They'll let you fall into the sea. We've done that bit already. We're talking about from this new bit of text now. So um, the men who brought you here leave straight away, though they are tired. I should really have put these in quotation marks. And then they have not spoken to you in the days or hours you spent with them. Um, sorry, this resource would be on your sheet, but I didn't actually talk through it at the beginning, so I do apologise for that. Um, so I do apologise. So it will be on your resource, um, but I just forgot to put it in the video. But that's where I'm taking the answers from for that. And then 2B, oh my goodness, big answer alert. 
explain how the description of the men supports the idea that they are scared and then you're going to give examples and justify your reasons so the examples can come from other things we know about the men being scared already but we're going to add in to this new bit and basically the text states that the men are going to burn the boat that people have traveled on when they finish using it because it says they'll burn the boat when they get back as they did your house so we've learned that the men are going to plan on burning this boat as soon as they get back and these men are the same men that burned the houses so it shows that they don't want any possible contact with anything to do with these people so these people have lived in a house and just because they lived there the house is burnt now and then they got on a boat and just because they got on a boat, they burnt the boat. How unproductive and how wasteful is that? They're not going to clean it. They're just going to destroy it. So it also kind of shows that they have something that is so bad and so big that the men are so scared of it and they need to destroy it. So it shows they're unwilling to have any contact with anything that the people touched. And they will burn it to destroy anything that might possibly harm them. This level of destruction suggests a high level of fear towards the people. Because you wouldn't go and burn something unless you really wanted to destroy it. And they're only destroying it because they're terrified of it passing on something contagious that these people had. So this massive high level of fear. So in addition, the text states that the men have been working for days or hours. And as soon as they get to the island, they just leave. And it says they leave straight away, although they're tired. Can you imagine rowing for so long that it was days from this green dot on the horizon? Uh, just going, 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 going for ages. Then they get there bung the people off, turn around and go straight back. They don't stop for a drink. They don't stop for a rest. They've been rowing through the night. They've not slept, but they're not going to stop. So it also shows us that they're really scared of getting any, spending any more time with these people. So they'd rather be in pain than spend any more time with the people they've transported. Um, big answer. Again, as always, look at your answer and see how well yours compares to mine and then magpie the bits that you maybe missed out you might have not thought about the fact that it says they didn't stop you might have not thought about the fact about the burning and how that means and uh, that they're really scared so please do edit and improve your work and i'm really looking forward to seeing your answers on this one how much you've thought about what's going on and how much you've reflected upon your answers